Hi friends, so we are just two weeks into 2023 and by now most cyber security teams are already in full swing of the security roadmaps, you know. I've discussed before the importance of having like a governance framework and a cloud security roadmap if you're serious about implementing cloud security properly, right? But and I wanted to talk about in this video, I want to focus on the cloud security risks for 2023, which are very important. I want to talk about like which are the main things you should focus on based on the reports I've seen based on my own experience. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try not to mention obvious things like misconfiguring your S3 buckets or implementing MFA. You know, everybody should be doing that. If you're not doing that, please do that right now. But the focus out on those threats or risks which might get missed, okay, by the cloud security teams. So before we move ahead, guys, welcome to my channel, the cloud security guy. My name is Tamur Ujlal. And in case you're new here, I talk on a weekly basis about things like cloud security, AI, and general cyber security career advice. So today I want to focus on the cloud security risks. Before you move ahead, guys, please do subscribe to this channel, like and share this video if you found it useful. So uh, let's move ahead, guys. First thing I want to talk about is the skill gap in cloud security, which is extremely critical. There are simply not enough qualified cloud security people there. And what do I mean when I say qualified? Well, behind every major data breach, usually there is a lack of awareness or a lack of competence on cloud security. Most of the time, CISOs uh, or the head of cybersecurity, they expect their cybersecurity team to do a cloud certification and then be they are now suddenly qualified to secure the cloud, which is completely and totally wrong. It does not work. Cloud security is not something you just learn by doing a certification. And it's not something you do on the side. It's a completely different environment and it should not, it should be treated like a different environment. Okay. You can do all the cloud security certifications you want, but unless you get hands-on experience with the cloud, you will not be able to secure it. I've already made, I'm not saying negative things about cloud security certifications. They are very important, but they are not the end all. Okay. So unless you develop hands-on skills with the cloud, you will not be able to secure it. I've already made a video on the, like, what are the key cloud security skills you need to learn? To really make yourself stand out i'll link it here please do check that video so that will get a better idea okay so just remember the cloud you don't copy paste stuff into the cloud okay you don't just take what's working on prem copy it copy paste it to the cloud and it's going to work the same if you don't implement native controls and cloud ready solutions it can really cause you problems okay so you should learn how the cloud works before you try to secure it okay and check out that video i mentioned Okay, the next one is what misconfiguration. What do I mean by misconfiguration? Well, the first risk, lack of awareness leads to misconfiguration. A cloud data breach usually happens not because of a hacker, because because of a, somebody misconfiguring the cloud environment. The cloud moves very, very fast. And without security automation in place to fix issues, you're just waiting for a cloud breach to happen. How do you fix those things? Put in a native or a third party CSPM solution a cloud security posture management solution and make sure that you have things like auto remediation and other things which are there which can automatically jump in and fix the issues okay i have made a complete video on cspm so please check that out on the cloud security tools which are there okay okay what are the other things so now the same thing the same issue about misconfigurations and lack of skills leads to the other one which is the no visibility and in an ideal world you know you would only either have a fully on-prem or fully on cloud, or you would be using just one cloud provider. However, that's not true. Most organizations are using multi-cloud, which might be scattered all over the globe and security is a nightmare. And now you don't know, the CISO does not know what's your risk level, right? If you want to take a risk level, again, this is where a CSPM comes up, which I've mentioned before. What does a CSPM do? It'll give you visibility, okay? It'll show you what is the current security posture of your cloud? What is happening? Like, what are the key risks which are there? What is your benchmarking? A lot of people, they make the mistake, either they don't implement a CSPM, okay? Or what they do is they implement a CSPM, but they do not look at it. They don't generate alerts. They don't have, a, they don't have these findings being fed into their risk management solution. And so they are not tracking them. And what happens is the CSPM is there, nobody's looking at it. And you're getting like critical findings, which nobody is working on. So many teams I've seen who made the same this mistake. They just implement a solution. They either forget about it or they don't improve upon it. They don't automate it. They don't put in auto remediation. And if you have like thousands of alerts being generated, nobody's going to look at that. So please, the lack of visibility is a critical factor. The cloud moves very, very fast. And you need, you need to have some sort of native or third party CSPM solution there to help secure it. And last, which is a big blind spot, which is API security. Unfortunately, Gartner predicted API security attacks are going to be the biggest attacks going forward, simply because there's not enough awareness. 
it, the reason it's a blind spot because cyber security teams usually they're not aware of apis they don't know how many apis are there in their environment and developers are usually launch the apis quickly and they don't put in proper controls and this problem gets magnified in the cloud as apis are the like the doorway to your cloud applications right this is how applications talk to each other when you think about the cloud you can th just think of a bun big list of apis who are communicating with each other and all these APIs can be code injected, like SQL injection, you have code injection and APIs also, and DDoSed into oblivion unless controls are implemented. And external APIs, they can also get be used in a software supply chain attack. Why? Because the cloud is like software upon software, right? So many software are there. And what happens is an attacker can compromise an external API and use that to jump into your environment, okay? So there are so many dependencies when you're using cloud software, make sure that you are aware of like what sort of external APIs, vendor APIs you are using, what are the security of those APIs? Do you even know what security of the APIs is, how to secure them? So ask yourself this, do you know how many APIs they are? And do you have confidence that those APIs are secured? How many of these APIs are controlled by you? How many is external? I made a free course on API security, I'll link it here. Do take a look at that. Okay guys, I hope that was useful. Uh, I didn't want to make it too long a video because I want you to focus on these critical risks. If you found this video useful, please do subscribe to this channel and share and like this video. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you in the